Welcome back to Subtle Stories Studio. Brace yourselves for an enthralling journey as we unveil a deal with the devil, an immersive series that plunges you into the gripping tale of Addison Young. Witness her descent into a world of treachery and her courageous battle against the formidable Ryan Wilson and his enigmatic elite circle. Subscribe now for a thrilling journey of secrets, rebellion, and the ultimate battle between light and darkness. Let the devilish adventure begin on our YouTube channel. Episode 001 The Unavoidable Fate Inside the elite circle head's luxurious manor, a young girl dressed in a white short gown walked with them, her bright eyes revealing her innocence. Her thick eyelashes were like a small fan, and in the blink of an eye, it made people feel that she was pitiful. Addison walked along the elegantly decorated corridor, curiously looking at her surroundings. Her long hair, which was like a waterfall, gently swayed along with the direction of her body. Her pure appearance and temperament were like a little fairy that had mistakenly entered the world, and her steps were a little restrained as she followed the middle-aged man in front of her. No matter how elegant and quiet the decorations of the manor were, it could not conceal the fact that it was the biggest selling point of Manhattan. Even Addison, an innocent little girl who was ignorant of the affairs of the world, had long heard of this place, which made her even more uneasy. Her uncle had told her to be obedient, so all she had to do was be obedient. As long as she obeyed, her twin brother would be safe in the hospital. She and her brother had originally come to her uncle's house, and since her brother's medical fees were expensive, she didn't dare to have too much hope. As long as she could wait until college and graduate, she could work and earn money. Arriving at the innermost room on the top floor, he pushed open the thick glass door, which had a golden luster to it. The thick smell of smoke wafted into his nose, making him appear even more smoky under the dim light. Addison frowned as she looked at the noisy private room and suddenly quieted down. Addison had never been to such an occasion before. She twisted her fingers nervously and hid behind Nicholas timidly. There was a man sitting alone on the luxurious black sofa. His face could not be seen clearly. Only the smoke in his hand had continued to burn. The dark suit was unbuttoned and a slender arm was placed on the back of the sofa. The well-dressed men and women stood at the back of the entertainment district, looking at Nicholas at the door in a mocking manner. However, no one said anything, waiting for the upcoming show. The person on the sofa didn't even raise his head, as if he didn't even know that there was another person standing at the door. Nicholas forced a fake smile onto his face, his attitude was completely different from when he was ordering Addison around in the afternoon. At this moment, he was like a pug, smiling as he walked into the man sitting on the sofa. Ryan, sir, my daughter has arrived. Can we discuss the matter? The moment the words left his mouth, the unease in Addison's heart intensified. The originally quiet crowd's eyes recklessly sized up the girl behind Nicholas, the room was suddenly filled with laughter. One of the coquettish voices suddenly interrupted the crowd's mocking. Nicholas, it was just a joke from Ryan, sir. Yet you really sent your daughter here for a day's play? We and Ryan, sir, are extremely obsessed with cleanliness. Who doesn't know that your daughter is usually merciful and has crawled across many people's beds? Hmm. Huh. The giggling became even louder. At this moment, Addison was stunned by the person in front of her and what she just said. In her mind, she kept thinking about the words, send your daughter over to Ryan, sir, for a day of fun. In front of outsiders, her uncle always said that she and her brother were his children. Before her father left, he also specifically told her not to let others know that she and Alan were his children. These years, although her uncle and aunt were not too good to her, at least they provided food and shelter 
and even bore the burden of Alan's medical expenses. But was she going to be sold by her uncle just because of this? Before Addison could recover her wits, Nicholas's greedy voice reached Addison's ears again. Ryan, sir, don't worry. This is my second daughter, Addison. She rarely goes out. She's just become an adult and doesn't have a boyfriend. She has to be clean. Addison was stunned as she watched her uncle's every move. She was only 18 years old. Yet, when she saw her uncle introducing her like she was a prostitute, she couldn't help but clench the hem of her skirt in shock. Addison didn't know what her uncle had said in the end. But after he left, the door to the room closed, and she finally reacted. Just as she was about to turn around and run away, a man suddenly grabbed her wrist and dragged her to the edge of the sofa. The faint scent of tobacco stimulated Addison's nerves. His powerful arms held her in place, but there was no warmth to speak of. It was as if he was holding it up out of habit, but it made her unable to struggle free. No, I'm not! Addison pressed her hand on the man's chest in a panic. She wasn't Nicholas's daughter, but she couldn't say clearly. Her father told her and her brother that it was a secret, but she wasn't willing to be sold by her uncle just like that. This way, this is illegal. I can sue you. I Let me go. Addison trembled in fear. She didn't speak fluently, but she knew how dangerous this man was. She wanted to leave this place. There was another round of laughter, and the woman who spoke first clicked her tongue. <laughs> are you really pure? Or are you really stupid? In terms of Manhattan, you are the first person who dared to sue Ryan, sir. Since she doesn't know how to appreciate favors, Ryan, sir, might as well give her to his subordinates to play around with. The men laughed even more wantonly. It seems like you're jealous of this girl. The arrogant and wanton laughter and scolding made Addison tremble and not dare to make a sound. She could not only stare fixedly at the man called Ryan Sir in front of her. She knew that only he had the right to ask. Please, let me go. A voice as soft as a mosquito flew into Ryan's ears amidst the laughter. Ryan looked at the delicate girl in his lap coldly. He let go casually and picked up the alcohol from the table. He was no longer looking at the uneasy Addison. His intention to let go was clear. Addison rushed to the door like a little rabbit. Luckily, Ryan was willing to let go of her. The place was so scary. She didn't want to enter it ever again. Addison was still thinking of how she must move out to live at school after escaping this calamity. Otherwise, she would be sold by her uncle again one day. Addison jogged all the way, not caring about her lost shoes. She just wanted to get out of this place as soon as possible. She felt angry and wronged at the thought of how she'd always been grateful to her respected uncle, who was now giving her away for a business deal. Tears leaked out of her eyes the moment she exited the manor through the gate. Dad, why don't you let me take a look? It's good to have a long knowledge. I've never been to such a high-class place before. What if Addison wrecks your plans? Serena pulled Nicholas's arm and stood beside the car while complaining. Such a good opportunity to enter the elite circle. Yet, he gave this damned girl, Addison, such a cheap opportunity. What do you know? Nicholas reprimanded her. This matter is extraordinary. Why don't you take a look at your own reputation? Nicholas hated his own daughter for not being good enough. What do you think? It's good for you to go serve Ryan, sir? He has a fiancé, and with our family's strength, we can't even follow him. Once he gets tired of Addison, sooner or later, Addison will also be in trouble. Nicholas had just finished lecturing Serena, who was unwilling to give up, when he looked up and saw Addison running out of the manor through the main door in a daze. Damn it! Nicholas punched the car. 
leaving Serena behind as he ran towards Addison. Addison looked at her uncle who was standing right in front of her. She found it hard to control her tears, but she couldn't think of any words to say. She couldn't understand why her uncle, who was usually kind and polite, would treat her like this today. Nicola saw the excitement in Addison's mood and pretended to sigh. Addison, uncle's company has made a big mistake. If Ryan Sir doesn't invest in it, young family will be doomed. When that happens, our family will be forced to drink in the northwest wind, and uncle will be forced to do the same. Nicholas's earnest words made Addison stop whimpering. Uncle, we can think of another way. I'll graduate and go to work. Then I'll earn more money to help my family. Addison tugged on Nicholas's arm and pleaded. It wasn't that she didn't want to help her family, but she definitely didn't want to sell herself like this. Nicholas looked at his unenlightened niece, and he couldn't help but feel angry. When he thought of that boy lying in the hospital, his tone became even more unfriendly. What you said is too far away to save. If you still want to save your brother, you have to go in and serve Ryan, sir. Otherwise, Alan will have to come out of the hospital tomorrow, and you don't want his condition to worsen, right? Addison was speechless as she looked at her uncle. Her brother had a rare blood disease. Coming out of the hospital was too risky. Could it be that her uncle wanted to use this matter to force her? Addison, uncle always knew that you were a sensible child. After all these years, uncle is your father in name. So your father must have had some difficulties that forced you to do this. I'll help you guys out. And you don't want all your uncle's effort to be wasted on the future of our family, right? If you help uncle once, uncle will give up his bone marrow to your brother. The most direct way to cure her brother's illness was to change his bone marrow. Unfortunately, her bone marrow did not pass, and her father had disappeared for so many years. So the only hope for saving her brother now lay with her uncle. She had begged so many times that her uncle and aunt had not agreed, and they were not even willing to match their types. Addison, muddle-headed, followed Nicholas to the private room in the corner of the top floor. If it was really necessary to buy back her brother's life, then she was willing to give up everything. No matter how many times she warned herself, she still couldn't help but shiver. The impending fate had left her extremely afraid. He came to the door of the chattered room again. This time, the door was unlocked by a bodyguard, so Nicholas couldn't go in. He nodded towards the people on both sides of the door with a flattering smile, looked at the open door, and pushed Addison in. He didn't forget to warn Addison before taking action. If you can't take a good care of Ryan, sir, don't even think about getting yourself a bone marrow. Episode 002, The Deed is Done. The powerful force directly caused Addison to fall inside the door and kneel on the ground. She'd lost her shoes a long time ago, and her dress had a long scratch, revealing her slender white thighs. However, her sorry state at this moment caused everyone inside the room to mock her, and a few of the servants were called to help. But the fun continued as one wealthy man spoke. How much more noble is Addison Young compared to us? She sold to Ryan. Why is she pretending to be nice? The obscenities were cut off with the closing of the private box. Nicholas wiped the cold sweat from his forehead and silently congratulated himself that Addison was not chased out. Nicholas did not dare to leave. He stood guard outside the door and prayed that Addison would not run out again without knowing what was going on. Only when he heard laughter from time to time did he relax and leave. Addison kneeled on the ground. She knew how bedraggled she was, and her body trembled even more. She didn't understand why her brothers and sisters were forcing her like this. Her usually innocent and bright eyes only flashed with confusion.
Justice Addison was about to stand up and get close to Ryan on the sofa. A cold voice silenced the entire room. Crawl over. Ryan said his first sentence. Addison was about to prop herself up when she was stopped by this low, indifferent voice. No one dared to speak a word, but they calmly watched the scene. Offending Ryan was something they did not want to live for. They were a part of the elite circle, where the most powerful and rich leaders were. Nobody could come and go as they pleased. It wasn't until this moment that Addison finally understood why he'd let her go. He had absolute confidence that she would come back and beg him. This Ryan was extremely clear about his own strength and was someone that no one could question. Right now, he was punishing her for not being able to appreciate his kindness. Addison suddenly felt that the man on the sofa in the distance was so cold and ruthless, she just rejected the opportunity to cling on to him. Hurting his pride slightly, was he going to punish her by trampling on her pride? Crawl over. Addison knew that if she let him say it a third time, the result would be even worse. Her body was still shaking, but she didn't dare to disobey Ryan's words. So, she slowly crawled towards the sofa. The seductive slow climb became even sexier. Everyone looked at this peerless young girl, obediently crawling towards the king of the entire Manhattan city. And after laughing for a while, they all turned their gazes away and continued with the fun just now. Who would dare to continue watching? Was this an intentional joke? If Ryan was willing to punish someone, then Ryan would be interested. No matter how much he wanted to watch, he would have to wait until Ryan played with them. No one dared to touch Ryan's bottom line, even if it was just a toy. Ryan's enchanting figure slowly climbed up and down, looking at the cat-like girl floating over to him. He was momentarily absent-minded, but that was only for an instant. There were too few things in this world that could attract his attention. With a self-deprecating smile, he raised his wine cup and downed it in one gulp. When he put down the cup, the well-behaved cat had crawled up to his feet and was kneeling beside him, waiting for his command. Do you know what's wrong? Ryan raised his glass that was just revealed and didn't even look at Addison. It seemed that the wine in his hand could attract his attention more, but he snared it aside. This frightened and trembling girl was actually the first one who dared to sue him. Addison's entire body was buried in fear. Her indifferent words were even more like an ice blade than her angry curses, breaking her young heart. Understood. I know I will serve you. Whether it was his body or his words, Addison's fear had already been revealed. Ryan suddenly smiled and finally turned his head around to look at the girl kneeling in front of him. Was he really that scary? Leo left with a smile as he watched his boss play with the kid. It seemed like he had nothing to do with this place anymore. So, he went to have some fun. He was worried that the girl might mess with his boss, but now she seemed cute and obedient. Ryan looked playfully at the soft little girl in front of him. What did Nicholas, this old fox, say to make her stop resisting? Ryan seemed to have suddenly found some fun and revealed the first smile of the night. Addison was frightened to the point that she almost lost her mind. This cold and arrogant man's smile was dazzling, and everything around him lost its luster with his laughter. To think that such beauty was merely his cold and detached appearance. Ryan looked at the absent-minded girl in front of him and smiled even more. Why is this little thing always absent-minded? Very few people would dare to be presumptuous in front of him. Didn't she know what she was doing here? Ryan didn't want her to be in a daze, so he asked her, Addison, how old are you? Eighteen? Addison answered carefully, afraid that he would despise her for being so small. She hurriedly tried to explain. I, I'll almost be 19 and sometime. Why are you stuttering? 
the words that came in were all disjointed. Ryan shook his head as if he suspected Allison. No, you're too terrifying, Addison retorted hurriedly. Just as she finished her sentence, she realized that she'd blurted out her inner thoughts. She quickly covered her mouth, afraid that she would miss something. Ryan suddenly felt better after a night of depression. He couldn't stop laughing when he saw Addison's nervous expression. He lifted his hand to take her hand away from her mouth, then grabbed her chin and forced a few sips of strong alcohol into her mouth. Cough, cough. Addison choked on the pungent liquid until her tears flowed. She finally managed to calm her breathing. She felt like she wasn't that afraid anymore. She knelt beside Ryan, blinked her innocent eyes, and muttered in grief, I don't drink. With that, Addison fell asleep on the ground with her face blushing. Several bold young misses took the opportunity to walk over. Before they could get close, they saw Ryan get up, carry a drunk person into his arms, and leave the room in big strides. This caused a few women who wanted to cling on to her to be extremely disappointed. Leo, why did the boss leave? The others asked him curiously. Leo casually sent the wine into his mouth, as he said with a tinge of emotion. He went home to play with the cat. A few careless brothers looked at each other. A new pet? In the main bedroom of the Wilson Manor, the girl on the bed had shrunk into a small ball. Ryan, on a whim, carried Addison back and directly left the room. At night, he still had a top secret message waiting for him to verify. He busied himself for a few hours, but when he returned, she was still unconscious. Ryan took off his jacket, ripped off his tie and clothes, and threw them on the bed until he was completely naked. After a simple bath, Ryan came to the bed with a towel wrapped around his upper body. Addison moaned after being drunk, and her face was touched by her ice-cold fingers. It hurts. Addison rubbed her aching head and slowly opened her eyes. When she saw the person sitting beside her, she screamed and sat up, completely dispelling her sleepiness. Uh, you! You! Why are you here? Addison really wanted to shout this, but just as she said you, she remembered everything. She was gifted by her uncle to Ryan, and everything was swallowed back into her stomach. The fear that he'd gone through great difficulty to resolve once again surged into his heart. Although his face was still slightly red, his body could not help but tremble. Ryan looked at Addison's changing expression and knew that she'd completely woken up. He got up and sat on the other side of the bed. Let's begin. Addison, who'd just woken up, was once again stupefied by the cold and commanding tone. What? Addison asked in surprise as she stared at Ryan. Let's begin. Ryan did not have a trace of impatience, nor did he have any unnecessary expression. He said it again patiently with a light tone. However, Addison didn't have the slightest reaction. She looked curiously at Ryan with her long eyelashes fluttering. The little girl who forgot her fear revealed a trace of mischievousness in her innocence. Ryan looked at the woman who was completely out of breath. He extended his slender fingers and pinched Addison's chin, straightening Addison's face without any expression and reminded her with good intentions. Didn't you say you would serve me? Let's begin. This time, Addison understood completely. She turned around and sat beside Ryan, covering her chest with her hands. I... I won't. Addison lowered her head, not daring to look at Ryan's face. Her voice was so soft that even she could not hear it. However, in the quiet night, Ryan's years of training his hearing was heard. She was still too young. He'd never been interested in women who were too young or immature. He wondered if his nerves had gone crazy today as he brought this cute little girl back. Ryan frowned. He wanted her to go to the bathroom and wash up. Her bare feet were still covered in dust from running away, making Addison 
look even more pitiful. Addison's figure was well developed. Although she was 18 years old, her height was close to 5 feet and 4 inches. If it wasn't for her pure face and pure eyes, she could already be considered an enchanting beauty. However, her childish demeanor and actions made others feel that she was still a child. Even so, Ryan didn't plan on letting her go. Ryan wanted to say something, but the person in front of him suddenly raised his head. It seemed that she mustered her courage to look Ryan in the eye. Ryan, I'll study hard. I can serve you. Help my dad. With just one sentence, she broke all of Ryan's interest. It was yet another woman who talked about conditions and started to calculate the benefits at such a young age. He thought that she was a little special, yet it turned out to be only this much. Ryan despised her in his heart, but his expression remained indifferent as usual. His gaze towards Addison became colder. This small change was noticed by Addison, who knew that she'd angered Ryan again. Resisting the fear in her heart, Addison crawled to Ryan's side, wrapped her arms around Ryan's neck, raised her small face, and slowly moved closer to Ryan's cold lips. Episode 003, The Rough Night The soft touch made Ryan's heart tremble. As Addison got closer, a light fragrance wafted into Ryan's nose. Addison only watched the TV show and knew that her lips were pressed against his own. Nearby, there was the scent of tobacco. Not only did it not smell bad, it was also intoxicating. However, since she had no experience kissing, she didn't know how to continue. She wanted to put her hand away from the man. Ryan suddenly stretched out his hand and wrapped his arm around Addison's soft waist. He put one hand on the girl's retreating head and fiercely kissed the tender lips in front of him. The tyrannical and powerful force made it impossible for Addison to defend herself. She wanted to escape, but was trapped in his embrace with no way of dodging, not allowing Addison to back down. Ryan pried open the girl's lips, indulgently absorbing the sweetness that belonged to her. A domineering kiss took away all of Addison's strength and made her limp onto Ryan's body. Addison's face became even redder. She was too shy to hide the fear in her heart. Ryan felt his body tremble, so he opened his mouth. Don't be afraid. Relax. Addison was so scared that she started crying. A sob started coming out from under Ryan's feet. The more the woman cried, the more Ryan wanted to possess her, to have her cry out under him from now on. The desire for male conquest was so strong that everything was developing uncontrollably, and both Ryan and Addison felt uneasy. Ryan was surprised at his current excitement. He'd never felt such an uncontrollable thirst. He'd never lacked women, but he'd never lost control of them. At this moment, Addison was completely frightened by Ryan's series of actions. Intense uneasiness enveloped her heart. She who didn't know anything about men and women, didn't know that there were even more troubles waiting for her. Ryan, sir, I'm afraid. Stop. Stop, I'm, af I'm afraid. The whimper seemed to be urging him on. Love could only make people want to abuse the petite body under them more. Ryan felt his blood swelling. Don't be afraid. Be good and listen to me. He kissed the young girl's forehead again and stood up. He held Addison's arms high above his head with one hand, while he took off his tie from the bedside with the other hand and tied her wrist to the railing of the bed. The kiss did not stop, nor did he care about the crying of the people below him. Ryan had never cared for anyone in the matters of men and women, and it was the first time he kissed someone carefully. No longer hesitating, Ryan also couldn't stand it anymore. Addison didn't know how long she'd slept, but the aching pain in her body hadn't left her body for a long time. When she opened her eyes, there was no one by her side. There was no trace of a man in the room. 
If it wasn't for the bruise on her wrist and the bruise on her body, Addison would have thought that everything was a dream. Remaining in her mind was the charming and crazy scene from last night. Addison's pale face had a touch of red as tears continuously flowed down her face. She really sold herself and spent the entire night changing her little brother's bone marrow. If he lived, she would not regret it. But in the end, she was still dirty. She was no longer the same Addison from before. Looking at the eye-catching red collar on the white bedsheet, Addison couldn't help but cry out loud. The sound of intermittent crying reached the door, and the guard suddenly opened it. A middle-aged aunt and a young girl walked into the room with cleaning tools. Miss Addison, Ryan sir is waiting for you downstairs. He wants you to wash up and go downstairs for lunch. Here are some new clothes for you. The middle-aged woman's tone did not fluctuate at all, using an emotionless tone to transmit her master's order. Addison, however, could hear the disdain and mockery in her words. She wiped her eyes in panic, pulled on the men's pajamas she'd placed on the headboard, took the dress from the maid and stumbled into the bathroom. The bathroom door was not shut tight. The girl's disdainful voice finally reached Addison's ears. Why are you acting pitifully? This kind of woman who could casually crawl into Ryan Sir's bed is definitely not a good person. However, the middle-aged woman started reprimanding her. Jennifer, don't spout nonsense. She's the first woman Ryan Sir brought home. The girl didn't seem to mind. What are you afraid of? The miss who was sleeping with him now had the pure face of a university student. For money, she's secretly done some shady business. Ryan Sir's also new to us at the moment. Addison stood in the shower, letting the cold water wash over her body and her face wet. It was unknown whether it was tears or confusion about the future. She really wanted to push open the door and confidently say to them that she wasn't that kind of woman. She really wanted to argue for herself that she had been forced to do this. She didn't have the courage to open the door in front of her because even she felt that she was filthy. Wasn't she using her body to exchange for benefits? Maybe money wasn't the key, but if she couldn't give up on something that could save her bones, then how could she still have the face to find an excuse to rest in peace? Addison cleaned herself up and walked out of the bedroom without saying a word. Her face was pale as she looked at her feet in shame. She packed up and left the room that she would never be able to forget for the rest of her life. Jennifer curled her lips. Just as she was about to make a few more sarcastic remarks, the hand that lifted off the blanket suddenly stopped. The bright red color on the bed blocked all of her sarcasm. Jennifer really wanted to say, then what about my virgin body? When she thought about the pale face of the girl who'd walked out the door, she couldn't find the words to say no matter what. Maid Linda was also stunned for a moment before she pressed her hand on Jennifer's head. Her heart was no longer as cold. Walking down the stairs to the hall, Addison saw her uncle Nicholas, who was sitting carefully at the side of the living room, and her sister Serena, who'd always been proud and arrogant. When Nicholas saw Addison coming down the stairs, he immediately stood up and greeted her with a fake smile. Addison has woken up. Why are you so lazy to make Ryan, sir, wait so long? It was only half a reprimand and half a pamper, which made Addison feel that her uncle was a stranger. She knew that her uncle and sister must have been waiting for a long time. Ryan definitely wouldn't care about her. How could such an aloof and arrogant person be so preoccupied with a girl who didn't know anything? Addison did not dare to say a word as she walked towards the king who was sitting on the main sofa with tired steps. There was still one more step before the transaction was completed. Ryan looked at the business notebook in front of him and occasionally flipped through the documents on the table. He thought that he was definitely bored and wanted to work at home to deal with this obedient kitten. Seeing Addison come down, Ryan only glanced at the pale-faced Addison. Then, he continued to look at the computer and kept what he had on hand. Ryan put down what he was holding as he looked at the girl who stood three meters away from him. It seemed like last night he truly tortured this little cat. 
The bruises on his snow white arm and the red marks on his wrist made it look like a beast. Ryan smiled when he thought back to last night's craziness. Edison, come to my side. Before Addison could walk in, a long arm grabbed her wrist and pulled her into a warm embrace. The faint smell of tobacco made her feel familiar. Ryan ignored the two people in the living room and went close to Addison's ear, teasing the girl in his arms with a voice that only the two of them could hear. Are you very tired? Why did his face look so terrible? Did you learn it last night? Addison's face turned red. She struggled helplessly in the man's embrace, but was unable to break free from the shackles that bound her arms. All she could do was hold tightly onto the corner of his suit. How could he say such a thing? As for the others, Addison's face went from pale to red. She was so embarrassed that she could only bury her face in his chest, afraid to look up. She ignored the others, so she couldn't hear what Ryan was saying. Ryan was in a great mood. His cold face revealed a rare smile. From last night to now, he seemed to have smiled many times. If those brothers saw him, they would definitely be so surprised that they would swallow an egg. The feeling of being dependent on a cute little cat was really good. Originally, he only wanted to play for a night. It seemed that he wanted to keep a little pet by his side. Leo, who was in the dark looked at the weird scene in the living room and his mouth twitched. He looked at the girl in his boss's arms meaningfully. The boss's taste had really changed. He really wanted to take that once-in-a-lifetime smile, but unfortunately, he didn't dare. Serena, who was sitting at the side, stared at the scars on Addison's body and clenched her fists as she watched the two men who ignored her and their intimate banter. Damn it. She actually believed in her father. Ryan was a talented man, and the mansion's decorations and extravagance clearly showed that he was worth a lot. She only found out last night that Ryan was the president of the Wilson International Group, the founder of Wilson International Enterprise, and even ruled the entire Manhattan. Is daddy crazy? He actually gave such a good opportunity to Addison. This idiot. She, Serena, had missed out on a good opportunity. She hated him to death, but she also hated her father. The person she hated the most was, of course, the little bitch, Addison. If it wasn't for Addison, she would be the one sitting in Ryan's arms right now. Serena's heart was pounding. She looked at the innocent Addison across from her with jealousy. Ryan felt the unfriendly gaze from not far away and looked over coldly. Serena was so frightened that she immediately lowered her head to hide her panic. She couldn't leave a bad impression on Ryan. Nicholas looked at Ryan and Addison, who were sticking together, and felt very pleased with himself. He was too grateful for his wife's decision. If he'd known earlier that Addison was such a charming girl... He would have brought her out to curry favor with some useful people. Nicholas took advantage of the situation and took out the contract he had prepared earlier and started to fawn over him. Ryan, sir, look at what we agreed on. Look at Addison's face. Are you going to help me? Nicholas asked with a thick face and a flattering smile, afraid that Ryan would go back on his words. Episode 004, The Deal is Sealed. Nicholas's words made Addison's face instantly turn pale. She really wanted to forget about this deal. But the truth would remind her that as a high-class prostitute, the reward should be counted on the surface. Her stiff body didn't move at all in Ryan's arms. Ryan also felt the slight tremble of the person in his arms. Would she feel uneasy? Yesterday in bed... She begged him to help her father. She was so concerned about the gains and losses. And now, just a single sentence made her feel ashamed and uneasy. Thinking about how she cried and begged for mercy under him last night, and her immature demeanor, Ryan was really curious about what Nicholas said to her 
that made her change her mind and come back to serve him. As he patted Addison's back to comfort her, Ryan no longer looked at the well-behaved girl in his arms. Instead, his gaze turned cold as he looked at Nicholas, losing all the warmth he'd felt from Addison. A man who could use his own daughter as a prostitute did not deserve to waste too much time. Really? I don't remember what I promised you yesterday. Ryan didn't give Nicholas any respect at all. With a single sentence, he stunned Nicholas. Indeed, from beginning to the end, Ryan never said that he would invest in him. It was he who sent Addison out on his own accord at the instigation of someone beside him. Oh my god, he regretted that he'd been taken advantage of. And now that he could not get anything out of her, he allowed others to play with his daughter in the name of nothing. How could he show his face after this matter was known? Damn, Addison. It was only yesterday he'd forgotten about the important matters in order to appease her. If he'd known earlier, he would have let Addison directly take the contract into her hands. Right, and Addison. Nicholas seemed to have grabbed onto a straw that could save his life. He quickly looked towards the shriveled girl in Ryan's arms. Ryan, sir, sure knows how to joke. Addison, hurry up and help Dad to beg Ryan, sir. Or else... I won't go to visit Alan in the afternoon. Nicholas's hypocritical face was lined with lines. He didn't forget to threaten Addison. With his bone marrow, he wasn't afraid of Addison not giving her all. When Addison heard the name Alan, her body trembled. She hurriedly raised her head and looked pleadingly at Ryan. If he did not agree, her uncle would not keep his promise, and her last hope would be gone. Although the situation was not urgent, it would only delay the risk for one more day. She did not want to lose her body so easily. Ryan, sir, I'm begging you. Addison forced herself to look at Ryan. Her weak voice could only be heard by the two people close to her. Ryan frowned. Who was it? Nicholas dared to openly threaten this girl in front of him. It seemed that he was a very important person. Ryan didn't want to waste any more time on others. He signed his name onto the contract and dealt with Nicholas nonchalantly. Nicholas is also a smart person. He used his daughter to exchange for a million dollars in one night. It seems that I still suffer a bit from this. Ryan didn't have any other meaning. He just wanted to let the kitten in his arms understand how ugly the world was and see clearly the face of her so-called father. Nicholas who was very excited after signing the contract, found it hard to hide his happiness and pride. It's my pleasure to let my daughter serve you. I definitely won't let you suffer any losses. Brian, sir, don't worry. Addison will take good care of you. Then Nicholas turned to Addison and said, Addison, don't be in such a hurry to go home. And wait on Ryan, sir, okay? I have matters to attend to at home. After exchanging a few pleasantries with a hypocritical smile, he pulled on resigned Serena along and left in a hurry. Nicholas's heart was filled with joy at the success. One million! He had to make good use of Addison's relationship in the future and find more benefits while Ryan was in high spirits. Addison was dumbfounded. Had her uncle abandoned her? What did the last words mean? To suggest that she should not go home? His one million not enough. Addison could no longer hold back her tears. In a split second, they rushed out of her eyes. No, I don't want to be here. I want to go home. I want to meet Alan. Addison wailed nonstop as she squirmed in Ryan's arms. She was no longer as obedient as before. She really didn't understand. She'd already obediently agreed to her uncle's conditions. So why was she still staying here? She kept struggling, but she couldn't escape the restriction behind her, no matter what. Ryan was a bit upset. She was fine just now. But now that Nicholas had left, how could this girl get away? Who exactly was Alan for her to be so attached to him? A trace of anger had already been ignited. Be my woman in the future. Ryan was a little angry. He ordered the little thing in his arms and unconsciously hugged it tightly. No, I don't want to be with you. You're a bad guy. 
You can't go back on your word the next day. I want to go. Let me go. Addison no longer cared about anything. She just wanted to leave this terrifying place. The words in her heart rushed out, making Ryan's expression turn uglier and uglier. A dark and cold atmosphere filled the entire hall. Linda and Jennifer in the distance, Leo in the dark, all started praying for Addison. It was definitely not a good thing to anger Ryan. You want to leave? Addison didn't notice the coldness in Ryan's words. She raised her chin and said with determination, Yes! It was like she'd made up her mind. Only the heavens knew that this was the first time in her life that she'd been so brave. Unfortunately, her courage had been used in the wrong place. In front of Ryan, everything had been in vain. Good. I said one day, 24 hours. You still owe me a few more hours. I'll let you leave after you've made up for it. Ryan carried Addison and walked upstairs. Just as they reached the stairs, the corner of Ryan's clothes was tugged. Serena sent Nicholas away and took the opportunity to circle back to Wilson Manor. Coincidentally, she saw the scene of Addison continuously angering Ryan while crying. The heavens are truly helping me. Serena used her half-naked chest to stick close to Ryan's back. Ryan, sir... Addison is still young and inexperienced. How about I serve you? Her coquettish voice made the hearts of normal men go soft, but it made everyone in the room who were used to seeing the world feel extremely disgusted, whether they were in the open or in the dark. Jennifer and the others found it unbelievable. The difference between the two sisters was too great. With Nicholas's face... How could he raise such a pure daughter like Addison? Jennifer seemed to have forgotten that she looked down on Addison's character in the morning. Now that she saw her sister, she immediately felt that she was more pleasing to the eye. When Addison saw her sister had returned and heard Serena's words, she immediately stopped crying. Serena's willing to serve Ryan. That's great. Then she could go home and have a good rest. Serena usually liked to dress up for men. She doesn't have to feel sorry for her sister. After Ryan understood what Addison meant, he became furious. He thought that since Addison could hear what her sister said, it would be an honor for Addison to be able to be enlightened and understand that serving him was something she was happy to do. However, Addison didn't want to look as if she was far away. Leo, Ryan, what orders do you have? I'll give it to you as a gift. Ryan walked away with Addison in his arms without looking back, leaving Leo with the corners of his mouth twitching. Did he look like he was collecting trash? On the other hand, Serena thought it was nothing. This Leo was the popular person beside Ryan, sir, who on the outside didn't know that there was Leo within the Liberty International Enterprise, which was a subsidiary of Wilson Enterprise. Leo... Serena looked at Leo leisurely. Her jabbering made Leo's scalp tingle. Leo didn't wait for her next sentence and directly replied to Serena in a polite manner. Miss Serena, the door's over there. Anyone who goes in or out of the Wilson Manor will be punished. For the sake of Miss Anderson, I'll let you off today. If you really need to please someone, there are still places you can go to. You! <gasps> Serena... No matter how retarded she was, could hear the ridicule in Leo's words. She was so angry that she was at a loss for words. She did not dare to be presumptuous within the Wilson Manor. Because even if it was a servant of the Wilson Manor, she could not afford to offend him. She stumped her feet and turned around angrily, then left while twisting her swaying waist. Addison, don't be complacent. If you follow Ryan... Your fate will only be worse. Jennifer came out and gave Leo a thumbs up. Leo raised his eyebrows and responded to her. Usually, Leo's mouth would argue with Jennifer the most. But today, she really wanted to give him a like. The saying was too classic. Lydia shook her head at the two of them and turned back to the kitchen. Ryan and Addison had forgotten to have lunch. Ryan carried Addison into the bedroom. Along the way... Addison cried incessantly. 
I don't want to serve you. Why can't you let me exchange with my sister? I hate you. I hate you. I'm so scared. I'm so scared. Entering the room, Ryan leaned against the headboard, looking at the kitten throwing a tantrum in his arms. He'd never coasted a woman before, so he couldn't bear to scare her again. Addison, are you afraid of me? Do you have the heart to push your sister and throw her into the fire? It seems like you're very evil. Ryan sighed meaningfully on purpose, as if he found that the person in his arms was really a bad girl, and shook his head. Ryan's words successfully diverted Addison's attention and finally stopped her from crying. If I can do this, she can also do this for me. Addison replied to Ryan in a daze. Ryan understood her meaning, even though she said it that way. Are you crazy? Ryan felt that his temper was too good. He'd coaxed her, but she didn't know how to appreciate his kindness. It was simply superfluous. Seeing Addison nod earnestly and shaking her head, Ryan directly kissed her red lips. After a bit of biting, Ryan warned her in a hoarse voice with his forehead against Addison. I'm a poison. You have to swallow it for me too. He stopped talking and ignored the girl's screams of fear. Ryan just wanted to ravage her twice over and let her bloom in the most beautiful moment for him. In the evening, Addison was awakened by the rumbling of her stomach as the sun began to set. From last night to now, she hadn't eaten a single mouthful of food for an entire day and night. She only got a single cup of wine from him in that private room yesterday. At this moment, she was really starving, to the point where her chest was close to her back. Ryan always did that to her. She felt pain, but it was like he was on stimulants. Her waist was about to break. So that's what you call serving others. How scary. Episode 005, Breaking the Cage Addison supported herself against the wall as she walked slowly towards the bathroom. It was such a big room. But after finally getting into the bathroom, she was shocked by what she saw in the mirror. There was not a single piece of intact skin on her body, and it was even more miserable than when she woke up at noon. The purplish patches on her already white skin, the tearing pain between her legs, reminded her of the reality of being abused. This place was too scary. That bad guy was simply a beast. Addison's scalp tingled with numbness as she thought about how her elder sister had been casually gifted by the beast to someone else. She felt dizzy and her body began to tremble uncontrollably. The scene in front of her eyes became more and more blurry. Addison tossed the high-grade nursing supplies on the washstand and fell down. Jennifer had been ordered to guard Ryan's door by Linda. With her excellent hearing, she heard a sound and rushed into the room. She glanced at the empty bed and rushed to the bathroom door. As she opened the door, the scene before her eyes made Jennifer curse softly. Beast! The pitiful girl fainted on the ground naked. Her body was indeed in a miserable state and she started to suspect if Ryan had a tendency to abuse children. Jennifer, who was in her 20s, couldn't bear to see this girl who was much younger than herself. Jennifer bent down and pulled Addison up into her embrace, patting her lightly on the cheek. Addison, wake up, you can't sleep anymore. She'd been in a coma for the entire day. If she continued sleeping, her body would not be able to take it anymore. Jennifer felt great sympathy for Addison. After Serena's comparison, Jennifer's impression of Addison had completely changed. Ugh. Addison woke up in a split second. She looked at Jennifer as if she was grabbing onto the last straw to save her life. Jennifer, I'm so hungry. I really want to eat something. Addison probably wouldn't even be able to walk if she didn't eat. Jennifer helplessly helped Addison to wash up before giving her a new skirt to put on. She quickly carried her to the dining room. Inwardly, she sighed. Ryan was too smart. No wonder he allowed her to rest at Wilson Manor. Luckily, she, Jennifer, 
was someone who trained before, so her hand strength was greater than that of ordinary women. At the dining table, Jennifer was staring at Addison, who was gobbling down the food with her mouth agape. Even after eating three bowls of rice, she was still crying out in hunger, while waiting pitifully for Linda to go to the kitchen to get some steamed buns. Addison? Eating too much will make you uncomfortable. Jennifer suggested in embarrassment, silently cursing Ryan as a beast in her heart. Look at how hungry the child is. Addison eagerly looked towards the kitchen, anticipating the arrival of the big bun. Jennifer, I'm still growing. Of course I'll eat more. Your family's beasts are too evil. They wouldn't even give me food to eat. When she thought of Ryan, Addison's body trembled. She quickly dismissed the terrifying image in her head and obediently sat at the table, waiting for the steamed bun. Jennifer rolled her eyes. She couldn't bear to tell Addison that the food and clothing she was currently wearing was all ordered by her Ryan. Forget it. Don't scare her. Having eaten her feel, Addison, who was painting with Jennifer in the art studio, touched her belly and finally felt that she was still alive. She kept looking at the clock. Jennifer, what time did I come here yesterday? She asked carefully. About seven? Jennifer did not mind. What? Are you thinking about Ryan, sir? Seven? Great. It's half past seven now. Addison didn't pay any attention to Jennifer's last sentence, as she kept thinking for 24 hours. Finally, it was time. If the beast didn't come back, it didn't count as her breaking the contract. Right now, she only wanted to leave as soon as possible. Jennifer, I'm going out to get something. I'll be back in a bit. Addison quietly walked out of the art studio. It was almost midnight before Ryan finally returned to the Wilson Manor. After washing up and lying down on his bed as usual, he could finally take a little rest today. After checking for so many years, he finally had some ideas. Closing his eyes, he felt something missing from his body. Ryan suddenly remembered that he hasn't seen anything since he came back. The Wilson Manor Hall was brightly lit at midnight. Jennifer stood obediently at the side, not daring to make a sound. Addison. Her words were stuck in her throat. She hurriedly changed her words when she saw the sudden change in Ryan's expression. The surveillance showed that Addison had unlocked the door from the back courtyard. It seems that she'd entered Edgewater. The brothers searched through the house, but didn't find any trace of Addison. After Leo finished reporting, cold sweat poured out. Ryan's expression became even colder. Leo was also curious. How did a young girl, who'd just become an adult, unlock the high-grade electronic lock in the backyard? What was even more infuriating was that there were so many bodyguards. It was the first time in so many years that a living soul had escaped from their hands. If it wasn't for the fact that he was worried that Addison would have been captured by the bodyguards or even killed, Ryan wouldn't have gotten everyone to search the mountain in the middle of the night. Leah turned around and glared at Jennifer. Jennifer felt even more wronged. She was the one who ran off in her hands. There was no way she could defend herself. Ryan, sir, I really didn't tell her the password to the back door. Jennifer was also curious. How did Addison get out through the back door? The monitor showed that she'd been at the back door for less than a minute before unlocking it. How could she do that without a password? She even felt that she'd been wrongly accused of giving her the password. The entire Wilson Manor fell into a strange panic at night. Even a little girl could not take care of his many years of guarding. And she had really slapped everyone's face, especially Ryan. From his initial worry to his current rage, this kind of mistake was simply an insult. Investigate all the information on Edison. Find out what high school she's in. Little thing, don't let me catch you again. The horizon was suffused with a faint light. It was the perfect time for people to sleep. The powerful arm that bound itself was humiliated as it was twisted into various shapes of a waist. Finally, there were large patches of scarlet spots all over its body and streams of bright red blood flowed down. 
Edison felt that death was close to her. So terrifying. Ah! Edison sat up from the bed, sweating profusely. Everything in the dream was so real, so scary. Thinking about those things, Edison couldn't help but tremble. Since when had she gotten used to a state of trembling? She was really afraid of that beast. She couldn't let her uncle send her back. Addison, what happened to you? Waking up from her stupor, Violet hurriedly climbed onto Addison's bed and hugged the frightened young girl to comfort her. Addison, have you had a nightmare? What has happened to you recently? You've been having nightmares every day since you got back to the dorm. Did something happen in your family? Violet and Addison were specially recruited students of Stanford University and were receiving special allocation of treatment and education in the top-notch and high-class institutions of the USA. Apart from the tuition fee, they were also enjoying the high-class configuration of a dorm for two people. They're all super intelligent, super comprehensive talents. It's already amazing that she's going to graduate at the age of 19. But the students she slept with for four years are a year younger than her. They're heaven-defying talents. After staying at Stanford University for three and a half years, both of them were going to graduate with a master's degree. According to Violet's evaluation, Addison's knowledge capacity was at dictatorial level. She just didn't want to take the exam too quickly. Violet, I'm fine. It's just that I've been busy lately, and I might be tired. Addison was afraid of Violet's worry, so she didn't say much. After all, that incident was a humiliation. If Violet knew that she sold herself, she would probably look down on her. When the morning sun shone through the glass, Addison opened her eyes in a daze. When she woke up, she couldn't get the image out of her head. It'd been a week, and everything had been like a dream. But it was real. That man, that beast... Addison wished she could forget about him. She remembered the last time she ran away from that big house. Luckily, she'd opened the master key that could open any door. And fortunately, she was quite good at hide and seek and being stealthy since she was young. Otherwise, she wouldn't have been able to walk out of that terrifying cage. She walked from the top of the hill to the nearest bus stop. By midnight, her legs were about to break. There was no bus and she hid herself in the woods by the station, cowering in terror all night. After a week of peace and quiet, Addison had regained her strength. Fortunately, this week went by without a hitch. If her uncle knew that she'd been snuck back here, he might be angry, but she wouldn't be able to go home for the time being. With that $1 million, she could be able to protect herself in the hospital. After a few days... She would go back and ask her uncle to make a bone marrow match. Addison had made up her mind that the days would continue as usual, that she would take part in a medical seminar for him in a few days' time. Looking at the timetable she had made for herself, she drew a heavy circle on the calendar. Ryan rubbed his heavy forehead and leaned on the leather chair in the study tiredly. That person had appeared again. He'd hidden himself well. After so many years... He'd only managed to catch a trace of him. And now, he disappeared without a trace. How hateful! Ryan punched the table. He'd clearly found out that a man had appeared in Manhattan City recently. Yet, he hid himself within his territory without leaving a single trace. Charles, it's been 18 years. You must live well. Snap, snap, snap. Come in. Ryan's train of thoughts was interrupted by a knock on the door. Leo brought an A4 piece of paper into the Wilson Manor study, nervous from Ryan's cold voice. It looked like Ryan was in a bad mood. Giving this information away at this moment made him feel like he was sending a sheep into a tiger's den. Ryan, this is all the information I can find on Addison. Leo handed over a thin piece of paper as if he was going to die. Only... He knew that even though it was just a piece of paper, there was still half of it blank. Ryan tapped the table lightly with his finger, which made Leo break out in a cold sweat. He knew that Ryan was angry. There were very few people who could not be found by Leo, and in Addison's place, he could be considered to have been defeated time and time again.
Thank you for joining us on this gripping journey through a deal with the devil. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more thrilling content. Hit that notification bell to be alerted when new episodes release. Stay tuned for the next chapter of Intrigue and Suspense. Until then, may your path be guided by the light. Farewell, adventurers. Thank you for your ongoing support, and we can't wait to share more stories with you in the future.